This video deals with the topic of action learning. Now it's one video amongst several on the course and it goes without saying that you should make every effort to view the other videos as well. But in this case, in this video, let's look at the, the principles of action learning. Now generally, adults learn best when they are involved in their own learning about a current life situation. So the hypothesis here, if you like, is that we learn best when we're involved about involved with some issue that concerns us. It's not an issue in the abstract. This is one that has practical implications for us. And we learn best when we're engaged in solving a problem associated with some issue that impacts on our lives. Also, adults who voluntarily choose a learning experience usually learn more readily. If we opt into a learning experience, that's because we want to be there. We want to learn from it. We're more enthusiastic. We're more involved. We're more committed. If we're forced into a learning situation, we'll have resistance. We, we will reject it. We'll go through the motions of completing it, but we don't really learn from it. We will not take away the, the key features of the learning that, was, that was, should have been picked up from that experience. We will we'll reject it. So if we voluntarily choose a particular learning experience, we learn more from it. So we have, we have two parts here. One is that, generally speaking, we, we learn more if we're involved in our own learning. If we, if we can determine our learning and we can determine what it is we're doing to gain knowledge about a particular situation. And in particular, if it has practical implications for our lives, that makes it all the more uh, it, impressive. It, it, it impacts on us more. And also the second part, of course, if we voluntarily go to solve this problem, we're not pushed or not coerced. If we voluntarily go to uh, solve the problem, we will learn uh, more readily. We, we will uh, we'll be more engaged. Now, learning happens at three levels. And this is really all we're going to do in this video is we're going to talk briefly about the three levels at which learning happens. First of all, it happens at three levels. So the first one is we learn about ourselves. Uh, we're engaged in the problem. There is a problem of some sort, a life problem, how to fix something or how to do something. And it impacts on our lives. So we're learning about our approach to solving the problem. We're learning about the way we are going to bring our resources, our abilities, our, our talents, our skills to bear on solving this problem. We're going to analyze the problem. We're going to think about it. We're going to try and solve the problem. But really what we're doing as well is we're learning about ourselves, about how we go about solving the problem. So we know about our, our shortcomings. We know we've made mistakes. We know we have, uh, we've not gone about the problem correctly. We do that when, when the problem, we don't have a problem, when, when the issue continues. And then we have to try a different route but we're learning about ourselves and the way we're approaching it. We're approaching it analytically, cool, uh, cool uh, calm and collected. We're, we're trying different solutions. We're trying different tools. We're, we're looking at it very carefully. And really, that says a lot about us, about our approach to problem solving. So we're learning about ourselves. We're also learning about the uh, issue being tackled. Whatever the problem is, we're learning about that. So whatever the problem is, if it's a, uh, an engineering problem or a, a building problem or uh, whatever the problem is, we're learning about the problem. Why is there a problem? What happened? And how can it be fixed? How can it be resolved? So we're learning about that. 
Now we're learning about ourselves and we're learning about whatever the, the issue is, the, the problem is. We're learning about the problem as well, trying to solve it. We're also learning about uh, the issue being tackled. We're, we're learning about the process of learning about that issue. The, the issue, the problem, is giving us a learning platform. It's an unusual way to look at uh, learning, but the problem has created an environment or, or a platform for us to learn. So we're learning about the process of learning itself. So what we're doing is we're learning how to solve the problem and once we've resolved it we now know how to go about resolving similar problems in the future. So we've learned about how to solve the problem. We've also learned about the the problem itself, how, how to whatever the issue was, we know how to resolve it, and we've learned about ourselves. So there are three different levels of action learning. Now the, the principles of adult learning. Well, the first one we could call warmth and light, if you like, support and challenge. Uh, by this we mean that when we tackle a problem, we see a problem, sometimes we we look for support, we, we talk to our colleagues, we consult the manual, we we look at the, the whatever the problem is, we look at it from different perspectives and we try to see if anyone has met a similar problem and how did they go about it and share the experience. But we also recognize the challenge and we're taking on a challenge in trying to resolve the problem. Whatever the issue is, we're, we're taking on a challenge to fix it. And it's a challenge that we should win, we should be able to resolve it, hopefully. It should have a solution. So we involve others, we, we talk and we, we build up, a, if you like, a little community about this problem. People who have tackled similar problems in the past and have gone about it in certain ways and we try to talk to them and learn from it and study it and think about it. And we also recognize the, the challenge itself. Listening is very important. It's, it's essential that when we seek support from others, that we listen to them. We do not try to, try to, to bully our views on them. We've, we've involved those people because they have had an experience in solving a similar, a similar problem. So we should give them at least the courtesy of listening. But more importantly, through listening, and through listening properly, we learn how they resolved the problem in, or similar problems in the past. And that can be um, a roadmap for us to solve the particular problem facing us. So listening, and listening attentively, is very important. Then we, we should reflect. We should reflect all the time on, on learning situations. But sometimes, if the problem is very complex and we resolve certain parts of it, then we should reflect uh, often. Even though the job is not complete, we should reflect on what has gone right and, and why it's worked, because that may be a pointer towards the resolution of the remaining problems, which will give us an overall solution. But reflection is how we learn. Reflection is what internalizes it. It takes, us, it takes the solution into us, so we, we carry it as a part of our experiences. And if confronted by a similar problem in the future, we can draw on our knowledge. But that knowledge has only been put there because of our past experiences and because we reflected on how we solved the, the past issues. Questioning is, is very important. Questioning is, it should be relevant to whoever the problem is, but questioning should, should be progressive. It should go in steps. And when the first question is asked, once a solution, once an answer has been found to that question, it should lead to the next question. So there is a, a systematic approach to the solution. 
leading from one situation to the next to the next until it's finally resolved. And this approach involves questioning all the time. The questions may be very straightforward. If I do this, what will happen? If I do that, will it break or will I make the situation worse? Now, these type of questions, once they've been addressed and resolved, moves us to the next level, which moves us on to the next level, which moves us towards a solution. So being very careful about questioning and making sure we're asking the right questions is very important. Getting feedback on solutions to problems is also a very important part of learning. Feedback from, say, colleagues or from uh, others who may have experienced the problem and who may have even attempted to solve it in the past. But getting feedback means uh, our own inadequacies in approaching the problem will be exposed. If the feedback is open and honest, then we will learn from the feedback. We will learn there was a better method, a better route, a more efficient route to go down, a better solution to the problem. So looking for feedback is very important. The feedback should be critical. And by that it means it should look for better ways than uh, the ones that we, we selected to solve the problem. It should look for better ways. It should question the way we approached it. It should question the timing, the method used, the, the sequence we, we attempted to solve the problem. It should question everything and it should look for better ways a better methodology for solution um, uh, for, for solving the solution. So feedback is, is, is very important. And these five different points will help us when we go to solve particular problems that we've had some experience of in the past and when we encounter these in the future. It's also, of course, um, a wider part of our learning because we have now uh, greater experience. We have solved problems. We, we have polished our analytical abilities. We have, uh, we have a solution and we should be uh, happy that we have managed to find a solution. And through reflection, through questioning and through feedback, we're able to uh, make sure that the solution that we, we used uh, even though it may have had uh, errors and, and inefficiencies in it, that that is the foundation that can we can be used in the future, albeit with the, the tweaks that we have picked up from reflection, from feedback, from questioning, and so on. So the next time, if there is a next time, when we face a similar problem, we will be much more confident about taking it on. So that's all we're going to deal with in this one. It's a follow-on um, class from the introduction to uh, action learning, which is a brief class uh, separate to this one. And this in turn will, of course, uh, lead on to other classes, as I said right at the outset. But that's all we're going to deal with here. So let's leave it at that and say thank you for watching.